the 30th of January 1649, King Charles I made his way up to the scaffold, where an executioner was waiting for him, armed with the axe that would change the face of history. It was a very cold morning, and the king would request two shirts to wear, so his shivering was not interpreted by the large crowd that had gathered in Whitehall in London for fear. Some people describe the scene as the saddest sight England ever saw, and the king, despite his failings, could have been spared or exiled. However, figures such as Oliver Cromwell would put the king to death for his treason against the people of England, but in one swift blow from the axe, the king of England lost his head in front of the people he was said to have wronged. However, much is documented and recorded about what happened on that day with the king's execution, but there is a mystery as to who the man was who wielded the axe. Join us today as we look at the man that executed King Charles I, and to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. The identity of the executioner that executed King Charles I was never revealed to the English people and the population. Throughout history, many executioners preferred to carry out their work discreetly, and they often at times wore a face mask and concealed their identity. But there would be other executioners who became well-known celebrities. For example, during the French Revolution, Charles Henry Sanson became a popular figure, as he was the man who executed the French king. But with Charles I's executioner, there was a lot of mystery, and it was difficult for Parliament to find someone who was willing to take the head off the king. Kings were considered almost godlike at the time, and many believed Charles had a divine right of the kings, that he had been sent by God to rule, and because of this, there were many who questioned the spiritual legality of the execution of the king. But we do know that the executioner, who worked on the scaffold that day, wore a face mask and also a wig, and they also made a rather quick exit following carrying out the job. Before his death, King Charles I was worried about how the job of taking his head would be carried out, and he took great care to make it as easy as possible for the executioner. He tucked his long hair into his nightcap, keeping it away from his neck to make sure the axe could cut through as seamlessly as possible, as his hair could have troubled the executioner. This was a big fear, and in the decades after Charles's death, there were many examples of executions of high-profile figures performed by axe, which went rather poorly. The executioner did his job well, and this led many to speculate that the axeman was experienced and a man of great skill with the instrument of death, as he took the king's head in one swift blow. But after the execution, he did not shout out the traditional, behold the head of a traitor, following the execution, and he did not display the head of Charles to the crowd. This could have been, as he was concerned that his voice may give away his identity, and that he could then have been arrested by royalists and killed himself although there is a possibility that he was more inexperienced and that he landed a lucky strike with the axe and that he did not know the correct protocol of dealing with traitors' executions or that he wanted to get out of the area after the execution was carried out quickly. Because of this, the identity of the executioner of King Charles I is not known and there has been a lot of speculation about who he really was. It was Colonel John Hewson, who was a soldier of Cromwell's new model army and a man who signed Charles I's death warrant whose job it was to find the executioner. He would approach many different executioners for this, and he offered the job to around 40 different soldiers, and offered to pay them £100, a large sum of money, and give them quick promotion in the army for carrying out the job. But no one would take the offer, and one man who was rumoured to have been the executioner was a soldier named William Hewlett. He was promoted rather quickly after the execution date, but it's believed that he may have not been even present in London on the day the king lost his head. It was also said that Hulot was imprisoned on the day after he rejected the job to execute the king, but he was tried as the executioner after the restoration of the monarchy, and he was even sentenced to death, but this was overturned as other evidence came to the forefront. The most popular belief about the execution of the king is that he was a man who was very experienced in performing executions, that he was a man who had used an axe before to take heads. This was a tricky job, and there were many executioners who preferred to use other methods, such as the gallows, as less could go wrong when compared to using an axe. Jack Ketch, in the decades later, would take around seven swings of an axe to take the head off the illegitimate son of King Charles I's son, and his actions almost incited a riot. The people of England, while witnessing the executions, expected a certain degree of skill and dignity, 
and the executioner of Charles I had this. One name that has kept cropping up with regards to being the executioner of Charles is Richard Brandon, who many believe to have been the mysterious axeman. He was a man who inherited his job of being an executioner from his father. Brandon was born in London, and his father was made an executioner in 1611, but as his father got older, Richard Brandon worked with him as his assistant, and then succeeded him to the role. He was a man who was actually imprisoned himself inside of Newgate Prison for bigamy, and he was actually seen as a common hangman of London, who would deal with executions of many different people. He would, during the English Civil War, carry out a number of executions of prominent people, including the King's advisor Thomas Wentworth, the first Earl of Stafford, and he even executed the Archbishop of Canterbury, and because of this he was seen as a trusted executioner by Parliament, but was executing the King a step too far for him. He was clearly a man who was skilled with the axe, but at the time the identity of the executioner was not known, and some even accused Oliver Cromwell as being the man with the axe. But the expert way in which the job was carried out leads us to believe that it was a skilled executioner like Brandon who would do this work. It was said he was paid £30 for the execution too, but Brandon, as mentioned, was a man who executed other popular royalist figures for Parliament, and he had no issues in doing this. But he would deny that he executed the king until the day he died, but the people at the time believed he was a man who executed Charles I, as at his funeral, crowds gathered shouting hang him, and they ordered him to be buried in a dunghill, in shame and disgrace. The people of London had made their minds up that he was the executioner of the king. Following his death, there were three leaflets made that alluded to Richard Brandon being the king's executioner. It was claimed that on his deathbed he confessed to it, and he noted that he returned home around six o'clock that evening after the execution. But there were also rumours about the executioner's assistant, and this could have been a man named George Joyce, who once captured a king. He was supported by Cromwell in his work, and it was claimed that at a dinner party attended by many members of Parliament, the discussion about the king's execution was heard. It was claimed in this that Brandon was the axeman, with high-profile figures revealing this information, and the Lieutenant Colonel Joyce was the assistant, and that the only people who actually knew the identity of the executioner's assistant were Cromwell and his son-in-law, Henry Ireton. Joyce was looked for when Parliament was restored, and when Charles II hunted for those men responsible for his father's execution, Joyce had fled the country for his own safety, alluding to the fact he may have actually been involved. There have been many other rumours about who the executioner was, but many historians accept that it was Richard Brandon who did this. But following the axe falling, there was little celebration like there would be in France when the guillotine blade fell on the necks of their king and queen. The axe falling was met with groans in the crowd, and many believed they had executed a man who had been sent by God to rule over them. Others rushed to the scaffold to dip their handkerchiefs in the king's blood. There are reports that Charles I's head was dropped into the crowd, and that locks of his hair was cut off, but later in the centuries after, his coffin was opened, and his head was discovered to have been attempted to be sewn back onto his body. But when Charles II came onto the throne, he would ruthlessly punish those responsible for his father's execution, and he even ordered dead bodies to be dug up and posthumously executed. There's no surprise that the executioner of Charles I attempted to cover up his identity. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.